Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to do a December wrap up. I'm recording this on Friday morning. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm currently dog sitting and uh, he's wandering about and he's usually pretty good about like just chilling while I'm working, but I don't know <laughs> for sure how he's going to behave, but I have like pretty high hopes that I can get this video done. But anyways, yeah, that's why I'm like dressed super like whatever, uh, wearing like under armor under my t-shirt because I keep having to go outside to take him for walks and whatnot. So yeah, not like looking my best. Also a little bit exhausted because I haven't had to expend this much energy at all this year. <laughs> like the amount of walks that I've gone on and like running around and stuff like that because he's still only like a year and a half. So he still has like plenty and plenty of energy and he usually has like my two nephews to play with on a regular basis and stuff like that and I am not quite at their level. So yes, anyways, uh, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. First up, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has watched like my recent videos. Like I know like my favorites video always does really really well whenever I put that up at the end of the year but I feel like this year it has gotten a lot of engagement. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers so hello to anyone who might be new watching this and also like I feel like kind of the videos that I've put out recently in general have gotten a decent amount of views including like my book reviews and the discussion video I just put up recently talking about how much money I spent this year. There's been a lot of really good comments and really interesting comments on those videos so if for some reason you didn't see those videos which I feel like is unlikely based on the sort of view rate on them compared to my other videos those are up. I'll leave links for them down in the description in case you want to check them out. But I also like did uh, I think three book reviews over the course of December. Two of them are books that are actually mentioned in my favorites video so there's a very good chance that you've already watched them if you wanted to watch them. The first one was We Keep the Dead Close by Becky Cooper. Uh, the second one was Butter Honey Pig Bread. I always have a hard time saying that title. And those are two books that I really really enjoyed but I also did a book review of The Orchard by David Hopin which is a book I actually finished at the end of November but you know by the time the video went up it was December. But that's a book that I think a lot of people would be really interested in specifically people who enjoy the dark academia secret history read-alikes. This is a really really good book and definitely worth checking out. It didn't make my favorites list but it was definitely like one of the most engaging books I've read at the end of the year here. So yeah definitely check that out if you haven't already either my video or the book itself. But yeah if you are someone who enjoys secret history read-alikes or you enjoy dark academia books this one should definitely be on your list. Okay now to jump into the books that I read in December. All of the books I'm going to talk about here are basically books that I liked but I didn't necessarily love enough to do an individual review of and since I didn't do Friday Reads or anything like that I just wanted to kind of wrap them up in one nice package to sort of like wrap up my reading for 2020. So first up I have The Missing American by Quay Corte. This is the first book in a new mystery series by him. This book is being pitched as the first in a series called the Emma Dion I believe that's how you say it, uh, investigations. But it's interesting because I feel like Emma is a character who you get her point of view, but you like barely get to know her. She's in her mid 20s and the story begins with Emma as a police officer in Ghana and something basically happens and she ends up, I can't remember if she quits or gets fired, one of the two. And so she ends up get, going and working at a private investigation firm. And so this book is basically like her first case that she really works. And so this case is following this missing American who's named name is Gordon. He's older, like retired age, and his wife has passed away a number of years ago and his wife was actually of Ghanaian descent as well. He actually ends up talking to a woman from Ghana like online and like sends her money and all this stuff and so his son becomes like pretty concerned about this situation because he's like this might be a giant scam. What's going on here? And so in order to kind of prove him wrong. He decides that he is going to fly to Ghana to meet this woman that he's been talking to and to prove that it's an actual person and not just like some giant scam and while he's in Ghana he goes missing. That's kind of like a very top level overview. This book I thought was like fine. Like I think that if you are someone who enjoys pretty standard like PI stories this one will probably be for you like it very much feels like a dad PI story sort of book and the story is also told from multiple points of view which I think was you know always a problem for me or not always a problem but is often like an issue for me when it comes to books like this because you see things from Gordon's point of view you see things from Emma's point of view as well as like a couple of other characters who are in Gordon's life and things like that and I just felt like the book felt a little bit bloated in my opinion like there were definitely parts of it that I started to skim. I definitely feel this way sometimes with mystery books where it's like too much outside world building that doesn't really add a whole lot to the story or the characters themselves. Especially these sort of like series books tend to do that and it's 
doesn't it's very hit or miss for me it feels a bit like a standard procedural mystery book which if that's your jam this book will probably be your jam the second book also comes out in january and i was sent a copy of it so i will continue on with the series it's also really nice to read a mystery series that takes place in not the united states or like europe <laughs> next up i read the black jersey by jorge zapata Patterson and it was translated by Eki Obejas and the way this book is pitched it's that it's like murder on the Orient Express meets the Tour de France and so you are following mainly this one character named Mark who is of a French Columbia descent who is on this team that's racing on the Tour de France that is led by this American who's his best friend named Steve. Different players and teams keep getting injured or sabotaged over the course of this and so people, the police specifically, think this is being done on purpose. They ask Mark, to, since he's like kind of on the inside, to keep an eye out and to provide any information that he can about what exactly is going on. And so you basically watch as Mark is competing in this race but is also trying to figure out like who could potentially be involved in the investigation. So this is another book where it was just like it was good but it wasn't necessarily great. I think that if you're someone who really enjoys things like the Tour de France or if you really like sports books this would be really interesting to you because like a lot of this book is specifically about racing in the Tour de France. I've never watched the Tour de France. I've never had any sort of exposure to it outside of like peripheral information via Lance Armstrong. <laughs> like like I have no background knowledge at all and so it didn't feel like that's necessarily a hindrance to reading this book but it definitely felt like I'm not necessarily like the target audience for this book. If you're going into this wanting a mystery book I definitely feel like the mystery feels almost secondary to everything else that's going on. The reveals at the end I thought were okay but kind of expected although there was like sort of one reveal that was very intriguing and if it was going to become like a series it could lead to something a little bit more but it basically just comes down to like Mark investigating this and trying to figure out like who around him he can actually trust and who he can't but it definitely feels like it's more a story about this person who's competing in the Tour de France and like his friendships and relationships and things along those lines uh, and his background and sort of his experience getting to this point compared to the actual mystery itself. So again, another like three star book for me where it wasn't bad, but I definitely felt like the mystery wasn't as compelling as it could have been or just was like padded by the story about the Tour de France and people competing in it. All right, next up I read In the Hall with the Knife by Diana Petrofun, and this is a book that is basically like a modern clue adaptation in young adult form. So this book takes place at a private school called Blackwood Academy that is set up in the woods of Maine and you are following all of these different characters who basically attend the school. And so there is a major storm that happens and all of these different characters named, I'm gonna look at the list, Beth Peacock Peachot, Orchid McVee, Vaughn Green, Sam Mustard, Maester, Finn Plum and Scarlet Mystery are all left stranded at the university and while they are there I think it's their principal ends up dying, Mr. Body. It basically becomes a sort of, I think it's like 48 hour situation where they're trapped in this place where like the police can't come and get them because of this major storm and so they're trying to figure out like who killed Mr. Body because it has to be one of the, you know, dozen people who are in this building currently since the school has been evacuated and they're like completely set off from the rest of the town. So this is another book where like I liked it, I didn't love it. It's another book that takes the multiple perspectives route which I feel like just doesn't work as well in mystery books because part of what makes it so compelling as a mystery is if you have like a limited, relatively limited point of view then like things end up becoming like more surprising and better reveals and things like that. This book takes the point of view of basically all of those characters who are considered you know like the clue characters and so it felt like there wasn't enough development of any of them individually and then the mystery reveals weren't that mysterious or revealing because you're seeing so much information come through in so many different ways. I feel like this is a book that if you liked like the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson, you would probably like this as well. I know there's a second clue book out. I'm like debating about whether or not I'll pick it up, maybe eventually, but it's not like a high priority thing. But I am kind of just intrigued to see what Diana Petrofone does with these characters in the future because she does set up like a future mystery 
kind of. And so it'll be interesting to see if like that becomes the center of the story versus a who killed Mr. Body sort of idea. So yeah, I feel like if you enjoy young adult mysteries, this wouldn't be a bad one to pick up. And there are some nice like clue references and whatnot in the book, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily like the best book. So yeah, another like three star book, not bad. All right, next up, I read Court of Lions by Samia Dowd. And this is the sequel to Mirage, which I read back in 2018. The series is a duology. So Mirage and Court of Lions are the complete set. So if you are someone who enjoys to read series after they are fully complete, this would be worth picking up. I'm not going to talk too much about the plot synopsis of this book because obviously it depends heavily on what happens in Mirage. But the basic concept of this story is that you are following Amani who is captured to become the body double for Miram who is the princess of this sort of like kingdom situation that's happening here. And so in the first book you find out that Miram is basically like targeted because she is the like soon to be queen but people don't really like her very much because she's like she's of mixed race and so her father is the current king and then her mother was from the people who are like basically rebelling against the king and so like neither side really likes Maram and so Amani is captured because she looked exactly like Maram and so she's basically forced to become her body double and so in the first book you get to see sort of like that whole thing get set up and then at the end of the second book basically like you could tell a rebellion is about to break out and so this book basically deals with like the conclusion of all of that so yeah I really enjoy these books a whole lot and I feel like they're super super underrated they're technically science fiction because they take place on other planets but it feels significantly more like fantasy books and I think that if you are someone who enjoys sort of like these political intrigue sort of books then you will like these. They are young adult and there is a romance in here but I actually enjoyed the romance in these books which is super super rare for me uh, but I found it to be like actually genuinely endearing. I found it all to be like really really fun to read. It does feel like it concludes pretty quickly. Like when I was reading this book it's relatively short. We were getting to a point where I was like wait is this a duology or is there going to be more books in this series because it felt like we weren't quite getting anywhere but then like everything wraps up really really fast so yeah that would be like the one main downfall of this book but honestly I really enjoyed the series a lot it was really fun I actually got the second book from the library at first and then I went to the bookstore and bought a physical copy of it because I enjoyed it enough to want a physical copy of it and I already own Mirage. Next I read Just Like You by Nick Hornby. So Nick Hornby is an author who I have been reading since I was in high school <laughs> so like 20 years now and I haven't read everything that he's written but I have read the vast majority of it and so he is basically like a comfort author for me. I wanted to check out this book because it has like a pretty interesting premise. It takes place in London as all of Nick Hornby's books do and you are following this character named Lucy who is in her 40s and she is separated from her husband and she has two kids. At the beginning of the book she is basically like trying to figure out uh, dating and things along those lines. The other perspective that you are following is this character named Joseph who is black and he works at the butcher shop in Lucy's neighborhood and basically the two of them start dating. You like follow kind of the interesting relationship that occurs because again Lucy's in her 40s, Joseph's in his 20s. He doesn't really know what he's doing with his life and it is also all set in 2016 to I think 2017 so basically at the peak of the Brexit situation like pre-Brexit leading up to that whole situation. So yeah it has like that kind of like interesting concept and Nick Hornby again is someone who's like writing I really enjoy, his nonfiction I enjoy, like his essays that he's written on like pop culture and stuff like that but I just felt like this book fell really flat like it felt like nothing really developed enough and also like depending on your tolerance you may not want to hear people talking about Brexit and also like Donald Trump because that comes up and like personally I was reading this and being like oh this feels like a lot of conversations I've had or listened to over the past four years and hearing more of it is not really that much fun. In the beginning like the start of the relationship between Lucy and Joseph is really interesting but it feels like once they start like dating or whatever you want to call it it felt like 
it only focused on the conflict so it kind of like jumps time quite a bit like it'll jump like a couple of weeks or a month at a time and you're just seeing like Lucy and Joseph when they're like fighting with each other coming butting heads or you know just having those differences because of the age gap and the cultural gap and stuff like that and so you don't really get to see them as a couple so them as a couple doesn't really make sense like it feels like it's mostly a physical thing and I'm sure that's not how it was meant to come across there's also the fact that like Nick Cornby is a relatively well-off white guy living in London and so hearing him talk about things like being a black man in London or being an older woman in London you could definitely tell that like he has a very limited perspective on these things he doesn't do anything that was like in my opinion offensive or anything like that but you can definitely tell like he just has a limited scope on what those experiences are like and so therefore that limited scope gets translated into this book so yeah it's another book where it was just like a three-star read for me it was also like a very easy book to read and it was a book that I read I think after reading both Butter, Honey, Pig Bread, and We Keep the Dead Close. And it was kind of like a nice palate cleanser book almost. Very much like a beach read, vacation read. I just want to turn off my brain for a little bit. Read, even though it deals with like heavier topics, it doesn't deal with it in a way that feels like super stressful or anything like that. And I'm glad to see that Nick Hornby, as far as I know, hasn't become a truly terrible person like most of the people specifically the white authors white guy authors that I've read in high school all right next up I read if on a winter's night a traveler by uh what's his name Italo Calv Calvino Calvino I don't know how to say his name I apologize this is a book that is just like super super meta the book begins with the narrator uh basically providing his thoughts and musings on what it's like to be a reader and picking up a book the book is first written in like the second person as if like you are picking up this book called If on a Winter's Night a Traveler and then like the main character gets home to read this book and it turns out there is a like problem with the print that he got so he returns back to the bookshop and tries to get another copy of it to you know continue reading on the book but then when he gets like a new copy of a book it turns out to be a completely different book in general that also like stops abruptly and so this book is basically like I think six or seven different beginnings of stories and they're all like different types of stories different genres of stories and then in between those chapters you're following this character as he's trying to figure out like what the true book really is and trying to find a complete version of that book and then occasionally there are also just like general musings on reading and books and things like that so it's like a very postmodern meta sort of book happening here so this book just completely will depend on your tolerance for that sort of postmodern pretentious in my opinion style <laughs> For me, this was like a very mixed bag of a reading experience because again, you all know like I don't do well with like multiple perspectives and things like that. And so all of these sort of interspersed introductions to books just felt like distractions and it, I started to skim them at a certain point and I felt like the parts that I enjoyed the most were the parts that talked about like reading and writing and books and like loving books and things like that because obviously I can relate. So like those parts of the book were like four star experiences for me and then the other parts of the book were like two star experiences for me so another three star book I don't really have much more to say on that but I think that if you're someone who enjoys sort of like postmodern meta writing this would be worth picking up if you don't have a tolerance for that this will not be worth picking up and the final book that I finished was 50 words for rain by Ashi Lemmy this is a historical fiction book that was like a very interesting reading experience it takes place in Japan in basically post-World War to Japan. You're following this character named Nori who is basically like a descendant of royalty but she is a bastard child. Her mother was a, I think like a princess or something along those lines like very close to royalty but she ends up having an affair with a black American. And Nori is considered like a bastard child who is of mixed race descent. She has darker skin, curly hair, all of this stuff. Her mother ends up leaving her at her grandmother's house or her grandparents house I should say and so while she's at her grandparents house her grandmother basically locks her in the attic for years gives her relatively limited education and like has a tutor come to the house to like teach her something but not a whole lot and like does really terrible things like tries to like basically bleach her skin and stuff like that and so Nori just grows up in this like abusive household and then at some point Nori's half-brother moves in and Nori's half-brother is basically the joy of this grandmother's existence because he's like the heir to everything that's going to happen. And so the two of them end up creating this bond that sort of leads them 
through their like adult life and you kind of like watch the story unfold from there yeah i don't i don't think i can say much more than that without giving away major plot spoilers but this book was like too melodramatic and too much like a soap opera for me it jumps around in time again quite a bit which i always think is kind of a hindrance to books because you don't actually get to see character development if feels a lot like there are things said about Nori that you don't really see yourself like it, I was confused the entire time about whether or not she was actually smart or not and again maybe that's done on purpose because she sometimes can pick up things very quickly but because she left led such a abusive sheltered life she's like very unaware of things there's the fact that like she starts to learn violin from her sibling and like the entire time I could not figure out whether or not she was actually good at <laughs> Because I think they kept comparing her to her sibling who was supposed to be like a, you know, prodigy, basically. So the entire time I was like, wait, is Nori actually good at the violin or not? Like it never was made very clear until like towards the end of the book. And yeah, there's just like weird stuff that happens where it's just like you're supposed to believe that like these characters have a bond but also not. And you couldn't really figure out what was happening. And then like the stuff that happens at the end of the book like just seems so confusing and out of nowhere to me i just had such a hard time but again i think it's just because like it feels like a soap opera and so it feels like these like major what are supposed to be emotional events happen over the course of this book but there doesn't feel like it actually was built up in a way that felt real and meaningful it felt like dramatic things for the sake of dramatic things in order to provoke a response but I legitimately did not feel anything for any of these characters and by the end of it I started to get a little bit hopeful and then all of those dreams were crushed. So yeah I gave this book two stars which is very much like the unpopular opinion because this has a pretty high rating on Goodreads but I feel like if you're someone who enjoys kind of like dramatic historical fiction books you might enjoy this book. I also think that it potentially might have to do with the fact that like Asha Lemming as far as I could tell is not of Japanese descent so yeah two star reading experience which isn't great but you know it's fine it was a book I was curious about and I got it from the library so no harm no foul so that is everything I read in December this video was probably like slightly more mediocre than my other ones because all of the books I was really excited about I did full book reviews on so if you want to hear me rave about some books go watch those reviews but overall I can't say it was a bad reading month at all because I did read a decent amount of books usually December I take a real dip in my reading but because I didn't have like plans for the holidays really or like things to go to I still read a decent amount so yeah let me know down in the comments below if you've read any of the books that I've talked about here today and what your, your thoughts were on them because I know there are a lot of people who really really loved some of the books I talked about here today so I would love to hear you talk about that or if you didn't love them you know you're welcome to talk about that as well again there'll be links in the description to the other videos I've made this month because I think those are slightly more exciting than this one <laughs> so definitely check those out if you haven't already so happy new year everyone and thanks so much for watching Thank you.